So whatever you want to say about the issue that he's addressing, the, the style in which he's doing it is very unique, and it's very unique to YouTube. You notice it's just probably one of his staffers with a cheap camera, sitting at a picnic park somewhere at a picnic table, just talking directly to the camera, very casually to somebody who asked him a question through a YouTube video of his own. And it's unique because it allows for this kind of dialogue. And what, I, what, I would, what people would tell me is, what people would ask me when I would suggest this, would say, well, how are candidates going to respond if you know, 50 million people are uploading video responses to them and wanting to get the questions answered? And I'd say, well, they don't have to respond to everybody, but they should at least respond to a few people to let us know that they think of this as a conversation and that they want to have this kind of dialogue with the voters. And so uh, on Tom Tancredo's video, on Tom Tancredo's regular blog on the site, you could upload questions to YouTube or just type in questions, and every week he would pick a few to answer. There's a person in the United Kingdom named David Cameron who was the Conservative Party leader in the UK, and he did something very similar to this, uh, where he would take questions and people would vote on them every week, which ones they wanted him to answer, and he would answer in this very straightforward, very casual way. I mean, there's no studio here, there's no makeup, there's no CNN camera crews, there's nothing. It's just some guy with a video camera responding to people on YouTube. In other words, becoming more like the video bloggers that he is addressing. And I think that's significant. The problem is, not too many candidates have done this in America. Uh, we have Kucinich and Tancredo, two very marginal candidates, one on the Republican side and one on the Democratic side. Uh, but they're not necessarily candidates that by doing this are going to get this perhaps into the American mainstream. But when Hillary Clinton first started her campaign, she said, in a video uploaded to YouTube, I'm Hillary Clinton, I want to have a conversation with you, and I want it to keep going all the way to 2008. That was actually the, the clip they used in that initial 1984 video. Uh, but she didn't really treat it like a conversation. None of the major candidates did. I mean, occasionally they would take, they would, they would seem to respond to people on YouTube, but nobody did it consistently or casually or in a way that seemed to indicate that they were taking YouTube seriously for the new possibilities that it presented. So that's kind of sad. But as you can see, that's what the tribe represents. This is the this is what's most unique about what you can do on YouTube. But of course, it's a smaller area because fewer people are doing it. Um, and as, I, and as I said, just to reiterate, you can see now that it's not necessarily about popularity because some videos in this category, the Chuck Norris video is hugely popular. Some of these conversational videos weren't that popular at all. And in terms of quality, a lot of people thought that Hillary Band video was really lame. Oh, that blog, the blogosphere kind of trashed it. But that's in a, you know, a higher order of, uh, of uniqueness. So this shows you basically what's unique about YouTube and what are the candidates doing on it. So that's part two of the speech. Part three is talking about everything else that's going on on YouTube. Because you may not have seen a number of these videos on YouTube if you've, if you've dealt with YouTube politics at all. Because the most interesting videos on YouTube for politics are usually not made by the candidates. They're made by just regular people. So not only, so uh, you, I'm sure many of you have seen this video, but we'll show a small little bit. Just to get the idea uh, for what is, what's going on on YouTube. Wow, they took it down. Anyway, it's the Obama girl video. Yeah. Girl, attractive girl, dancing around how she has a crush on Obama. Have you, how many of you have seen that? Yeah, a good number of you have seen this one. Uh, it's funny, it was compared to a Saturday Night Live sketch by the creators. They weren't even necessarily trying to say anything political with it. It was just a girl in skimpy clothing dancing around New York City talking about or singing about how much she loved Obama. And yet, um, the media really caught on to this and they, were, they kept asking me in interviews, what is the significance of the Obama girl video? What's it going to mean for the 2008 election? I thought, well, I don't know if it's really too significant for, you know, people are going to go to Obama or away from Obama because of this video. But it is an interesting indication of what's possible. If people have something funny to say, they don't have to have a hugely high budget endeavor to do it now because the playing field is more level. They have a whole website, barelypolitical.com. I'm sure the video is on there somewhere. I don't know why this one is taken down. Um, so that's an example of the, the comedy of things. The other example of what uh, people are able to do on YouTube that's not necessarily comedy uh, but it's very, uh, I guess, emotionally moving. Uh, this guy, Will I Am, who uh, works, works who is with the Black Eyed Peas, created this video where he took Obama's. We're good. Like what? Where he took Obama's video, we took Obama's speeches and put it to music and had a lot of celebrity star power. Now that video's not available either. So I don't know. Maybe we should just refresh this first because maybe something's something has gone horribly wrong. Which one is it? I don't have this. One. Oh, I use, I'm a Mozilla person myself. I don't deal with it. <laughs> Sorry, maybe that was too snooty of me to say. We should try and see the Obama Girl video, because I, I like that video. <laughs> there we go. Thank all of you for your time.
your suggestions, your encouragement, and your prayers. And I look forward to continuing our conversation in the weeks and months to come. JB, it's me. <laughs> I was just watching you on C-SPAN. Anyway, call me back. <laughs> you seem to float onto the floor. Democratic Convention 2004. <laughs> I never wanted anybody more. And I wanted you. So I put down my carry sign. Knew I had to make you mine. Smile like it's sexy. <laughs> <laughs> you can see from the quality of it. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good thing. Uh, she, she does and she grinds all over New York City. <laughs> you can see from the quality of this. It's not, it was done with a professional crew, but it's not like, the super high quality stuff that you'd expect to see on television. This is completely a creature of the internet. It was expanded, it was uh, spread virally from just person to person, got millions and millions of views. They created a whole endeavor out of this called BarelyPolitical.com where they make a lot of humorous political videos now. Again, nothing to do with the Obama campaign. This was just somebody who had an idea, came up with a song, came up with the idea for the Obama girl dancing around, and they, made, and they got together and they made it happen. Another example of this is the Will I Am video, which I'm about to show you now. Uh, see if you can spot any celebrities. <laughs> it was a creed written into the founding documents that declared the destiny of the nation. nation. Yes, we can. It was whispered by slaves and abolitionists as they blazed the trail toward freedom. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. It was so. It was a lot of my ambulance. I just out on the Disney shore. Flying high. Swish buzzword. I can tell. I'm not going to give it Yes, we can. It was a call of workers organized. First Women advanced. reached into the ballots. The president who chose the moon as our new frontier. And the king who took us to the mountains. So it goes on like that, and it is, uh, it is a very moving video, and it's also circulated around, around the internet. Obama put it on his website, but again, not a campaign internal video, but you can tell because it's so great, it's so hit, it's got tons of celebrities in it, Will I Am headed that one up. That's another example of the kinds of videos that are coming from without of the, out of, outside of the campaign that are having a very big impact on the election process. And if you're an undecided voter, I'm talking to people that actually watched this video, and that was the thing that pushed them over the edge to supporting Obama. Because if you're an undecided voter, these videos, if they have a serious message, and the, the Obama group clearly didn't, but if you have a serious message, then you can communicate that, can communicate that on YouTube and get your point across that way. There are other examples of this, which in the interest of time, I probably won't show. Um, but the, other, the, the final example of how I want to, I guess, illustrate how YouTube is changing the way that just anybody who has something to say can get it out there politically is just by telling you my own story, which is why I saved it until the end, because it just fit there in the part of the speech. I was a Georgetown University student, started uploading videos, as I, ta as I said. Um, I had that response from Dennis Kucinich. I was talking about this two-way conversation that candidates should be having. And actually, I have an example of one of the early videos that I made. Uh, I'll just show you briefly. This is me in my dorm room talking about uh, Mitt Romney. 